Hi everybody, my name is Danielle Nicole. If you're looking for the perfect date night fragrance and you're not sure where to turn, I've got you covered. I have all different types of fragrances in front of me here from classy to sexy to sweet, you name it, so let's get into it. And if you enjoy the video while you're watching, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let's get started right now. All right, you guys, so this was so difficult to pick, but I did decide to go with my top 10 favorite date night fragrances. Now, I will say most of these date night fragrances are probably geared more for the cooler months, but I do have a couple that will work year-round for you, and I will be sure to do an updated date night video once the weather starts to warm up. Fragrance number one, YSL Black Opium Le Parfum. So YSL Black Opium Le Parfum, you guys, I am not a fan of any of the other black opium flankers. I know I am probably in the minority here, but this one, this one is so sexy. Now the reason this flanker is different from all the other black opiums is because the focus in this fragrance is on vanilla. There are actually four different types of vanillas in this fragrance, so it is incredibly sweet. The coffee is still there, but it is definitely toned down and you do have slight florals in the background. Now, if you are looking for a new vanilla fragrance to add to your collection and you enjoy very sweet gourmand vanillas, I would definitely recommend taking a look at this one. Now, this fragrance does not have the best longevity or sillage, unfortunately, but I don't care. I think this fragrance just smells so intoxicating and delicious, so you can definitely overspray. And I do find that if you're looking for a fragrance much more for closer encounters, this would be a great one. Now this fragrance will probably shine the most in the cooler months. However, I could definitely see myself reaching for this in the summer, especially for date nights. And again, that was YSL Black Opium Le Parfum. Fragrance number two, Navitas Venom of Love. For all of you out there who love cherry fragrance, you guys, Venom of Love is the most beautiful, boozy, chocolate cherry liqueur fragrance. It is absolutely intoxicating. When I wear Venom of Love, I hands down feel uber feminine, very sexy and delicious, but not overly sugary. Now, while I wouldn't categorize Venom of Love as a Middle Eastern fragrance per se, it definitely does have just a little bit of a Middle Eastern spice. This is just absolutely perfect for date nights. Now, I'll probably be posting this video after Valentine's Day, but if there ever was a fragrance that was made specifically for Valentine's Day, it is definitely this one. You get a boozy chocolate cherry. I mean, what else screams Valentine's Day like Venom of Love? Now, funny enough, cherry is actually not one of my favorite notes when it comes to fragrances. So the fact that this fragrance is definitely one of my most favorite gourmand fragrances says a lot. Now, the other great thing about Venom of Love not only does this fragrance last and project beautifully on the skin, but I'm telling you what, if you spray your clothes, I find I can smell this fragrance at least a day after. So this is definitely a very long lasting and a great projecting fragrance. So if you like the sound of a boozy chocolate cherry, I definitely recommend getting your nose a Navitas Venom of Love. Fragrance number three, Navitas Chocolate Queen. Now not only is Chocolate Queen a beautiful chocolate fragrance perfect for date nights. This has to be one of my most favorite fragrances of all time. When I say this fragrance is absolutely intoxicating, I'm telling you what, I am absolutely addicted to this fragrance. It just smells absolutely divine. Now with a name like Chocolate Queen, and when you actually take a look at the notes, Dulce de Leche, Fudge, Chocolate, you're probably expecting a super sugary, very heavy, rich chocolate fragrance, but I don't find that at all with Chocolate Queen. Now, yes, dark chocolate, that is certainly the star of the show, but I can also pick up the Fudge Accord, the Dulce de Leche, and a bit of the hazelnut, so it lends just a little bit of a nutty nuance to this fragrance. But aside from all those very sweet gourmand notes, there's also a very heavy sandalwood and amberwood base. So again, if you are expecting a very heavy, rich, decadent chocolate fragrance, this is not what Chocolate Queen is. Yes, it is gourmand and it smells delicious, but it's a bit more complex than that. This fragrance just gets me in a tizzy, you guys. Whenever I walk by my fragrance collection, if I'm not wearing Chocolate Queen, I absolutely have to take a sniff. 
Now, not only is Chocolate Queen one of my most favorite fragrances to wear on date nights, but this is actually one of my most favorite fragrances of all time. I just cannot say enough good things about it. I'm absolutely addicted to this fragrance. And let me tell you what, every single time I wear this fragrance to work, yes, I do wear it to work because I love it that much, I get a compliment almost every single time, at least one time throughout the day. Now, even though again, I would say Chocolate Queen would probably be a better suited for the cooler months, because this isn't a super heavy fragrance, I could definitely see myself wearing this fragrance when it starts to warm up just a bit. Now, I know some folks have mentioned that Chocolate Queen just doesn't have the best projection or longevity on their skin. And in fact, I actually found that was the case for me when I first received Chocolate Queen. But now that I've had it in my collection for well over a month, I do find the projection on longevity is pretty good. Now I'll also tell you that the times I've received compliments on wearing Chocolate Queen at work, it has been at least one to two feet away. So I do find this has a great scent bubble as well. So if you like the sound of a dark chocolate gourmand fragrance, it still has a woody base to it. Absolutely hands down recommend Navitas Chocolate Queen. Fragrance number three, Kayali Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli. Now this fragrance is for my vanilla lovers that do enjoy a slight gourmand undertone, but you also enjoy a more complex vanilla. Now this fragrance was actually not a love at first sniff. I did actually really enjoy this fragrance, but when I first sprayed this fragrance, if you remember on my initial review, I got just a little bit of an animalic kind of barnyard patchouli or oud. But the interesting thing, I put this aside for about two weeks. When I pulled it back out, this fragrance just smelled completely different. So I'm not sure if it had time to macerate more, but now this is an absolute love, especially for a complex vanilla. Now, even though there are notes like creme brulee, brown sugar, vanilla sir absolute, I do not find this fragrance is a gourmand by a long shot. Yes, you can certainly pick up some of those brown sugar and sweeter notes, but this is not a straight gourmand. You definitely have to enjoy boozy accords because you do get a strong rum, especially on the initial spray, and you also have to enjoy leather. Now, let me tell you, when all those sweet vanilla and brown sugar notes mix with that smooth, creamy leather and oud and sugared patchouli, this is another absolute masterpiece. This fragrance is so sexy, so feminine, and whenever I wear sugared patchouli, I just always feel very empowered. Now, at the time of filming this video, this fragrance is limited edition. Now, I never want to create FOMO. There's always going to be more fragrances, so if you ever miss out on one, it's okay. There's always going to be more. But I did at least want to mention, if you are interested in picking this up, just in case it does stay limited edition, you might want to take a look sooner rather than later. Now, if you typically find notes like oud, patchouli, or leather just a bit challenging, but you aren't necessarily opposed to trying those notes, I think Vanilla Royale would be the perfect introduction to those notes. Because even though, yes, you can pick up on the oud, patchouli, and leather notes, but because it's also mixed with those sweet vanilla and brown sugar accords, I just find this fragrance absolutely beautiful. Now, out of all the fragrances I mentioned in today's video, if the type of fragrance you are looking for is along the lines of being a sexy fragrance, I just can't think of any other sexy date night fragrance that is perfect like Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli. Now, for number five and number six, I'm actually going to talk about these together. So these are also from the House of Kayali. So this is Amber, Invite Only, and Burning Cherry. Now, I absolutely love wearing these fragrances on their own individually. However, if I'm going on a date night, I think combining them is pure magic. So taking all the notes out of equation, what I basically get with Amber Invite Only is a sweet and spicy amber mixed with cinnamon and a sweet cherry accord. Now, there's also some tobacco in this fragrance that I definitely pick up. Now, some people find this fragrance is unisex leaning masculine, but I actually find this fragrance unisex leaning feminine, and that's because even though this fragrance does have some darker notes like tobacco, and I think oud is even in this fragrance, because it's sweet and mixed with the cinnamon, 
I just find it incredibly feminine and again, very sexy. Now you definitely have to like Amber, of course, to enjoy this fragrance, but you also have to like the note of cinnamon. I definitely do pick up quite a bit of cinnamon. Now, even though I do pick up a bit of cherry, that is definitely in the background. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to Love Fest Burning Cherry, again, keep in mind, cherry is not one of my most favorite notes, but I just love the way the cherry note is done in Love Fest. And I think part of the reason I enjoy it so much is because even though it's a very juicy, kind of dark cherry to my nose, it's also mixed with raspberry. And to my nose, that raspberry just has a little bit of brightness, not too much, but I feel like it really uplifts the fragrance, even though it's a little bit on the darker side, if that makes sense. And I do find the raspberry note in this fragrance, it is just beautiful. It just gives it a little bit of a juicy, bright twist to the fragrance. So while I would say Burning Cherry is a little bit more on the deeper and darker side, I think because it has that kind of bright and uplifting raspberry note, I could really see myself reaching for this year round on date nights. Now, I really don't get any of the praline note unless it's just there to kind of sweeten the fragrance up, but I definitely do get the Palo Santo, and I think that just adds a beautiful woody base to this fragrance. Now, what's interesting, I do find a lot of people compare this fragrance to By the Fireplace, and I just don't find them similar at all, because with By the Fireplace, I find that is very photorealistic. You literally can smell yourself sitting by a fireplace with wood burning. But with burning cherry, I don't really find there's much of a burning anything, even in the background, but I do pick up that woody Palo Santo. So I think burning cherry is a beautiful, feminine, kind of fruity gourmand, woody fragrance, but when you mix it with Invite Only Amber 23, this is just beautiful. So if you like the sound of a deep kind of Middle Eastern spicy amber fragrance mixed with a woody cherry gourmand fragrance, I would definitely recommend taking a look at layering these two or just one or the other. Fragrance number seven, YSO Libre Le Parfum. So Libre Le Parfum is definitely for all of my boss babes out there that want to make an impression. So when you go on a date, you are not about wearing those sweet, sugary, gourmand fragrances. No, no, no. You want to send an impression that you are a woman that can stand on her own two feet. And Libre Le Parfum does just that. In fact, any of the Libre fragrances, this just happens to be my favorite of the entire line. This flanker is stunning. Now, yes, it still has that lavender accord, but to my nose, it is much more toned down. So even though it still keeps that Libre DNA, I do find the vanilla is amped up along with the orange blossom. So it's just a little bit sweeter than the other flankers. Now I do find this fragrance is a bit mature in the best way possible. So I actually probably would not have worn this fragrance when I was in my teens or perhaps even my 20s, but I now find this fragrance incredibly classy very feminine and definitely again sends that message listen i am a boss woman not a boss girl so when i want to send the impression that i am classy yet sassy and still have that feminine sexy edge definitely recommend libre le parfum fragrance number eight victoria's secret tease cream cloud so i don't hear anybody talking about this fragrance and i cannot understand why this fragrance is for my gourmand lovers, but you like your gourmands with a twist. So yes, while Creme Cloud is not necessarily the most complex fragrance on the market by any means, but first of all, I do want to appreciate the bottle. I think this bottle is absolutely beautiful, but this fragrance is so underrated in my opinion. So this is basically a light, whipped, airy vanilla meringue mixed with a pepper note. So this fragrance is basically an airy, fluffy, light vanilla meringue mixed with either white or black pepper. So when I first was testing out this fragrance, I was just basically expecting this to be a straight vanilla sugar bomb, but I don't find that's what it is at all. Again, it's that light vanilla kind of meringue accord mixed with a strong pepper note. So I would definitely recommend testing this fragrance out first, just because it does have that strong pepper, especially in the opening. Now, if there was only one word 
one adjective I could use to describe this fragrance, it would absolutely be bewitching. I find this fragrance just to be incredibly bewitching. There is no other way to describe this fragrance. It just sends me into another universe. So if my goal is to not wear anything too complex, but I definitely want to lure him in, if you get what I'm saying here, I definitely reach for Victoria's Secret Creme Cloud for date nights. Fragrance number nine, Victoria's Secret Bombshell Passion. Now listen, I am not just throwing these two Victoria's Secret fragrances into this top 10 list just to have something that is more affordable. I absolutely love these two fragrances. Again, this is another beautiful fragrance. Now again, another beautiful bottle. Now believe it or not, I actually do find passion just a little bit difficult to explain as far as the scent goes, but I'm definitely going to try. So I do actually find passion, just like Crumb Cloud, which I forgot to mention. Both of these fragrances can definitely be worn year round. Now this is definitely one that I think will really shine in the warmer months, especially the summer, but you can definitely wear it all year long. So I find this fragrance to be semi-fresh, now, if you guys know, I am actually not the biggest fan of fresh fragrances, but there is just something so incredibly sexy about Passion. It's semi-sweet, semi-fresh, but incredibly juicy. So my nose picks up perhaps black currant or passion fruit. Now, I know those notes aren't listed because this is, and yes, I can definitely pick up that too. So I will say this is definitely a rose dominant fragrance, However, it has equal parts fruits as well. Now again, even though this fragrance isn't necessarily the most complex, I do have to say this is one of the most sexy fragrances I have in my collection. Now listen, do not let this price deter you. Just because this is an affordable fragrance, this is one of the most beautiful fruity rose fragrances I've ever smelled and you can't tell me anything different. I just love passion. So if you are looking for an incredibly feminine, very sexy fragrance to wear for more intimate times, if you're catching my drift, this is hands down the one I reach for almost every time. So I just can't imagine my collection without having these two fragrances. Even out of all the niche ones that I have, I still time and time again reach for both of these for date nights. Number 10, Mugler Angel Elixir. Now this is the newest Mugler Angel fragrance to the line. I did already review this fragrance, so if you missed that video, definitely check it out after this. Now, unlike Victoria's Secret Bombshell Passion, where this is for more intimate times, this is for my more classy feminine date nights. So in my opinion, Angel Elixir is more for date nights when you wanna feel a bit more classy. Perhaps you're going out for a more formal dinner. This is a beautiful white and yellow floral fragrance. So even though this fragrance has notes of vanilla and amber extreme, as they call it, and you can certainly pick up those notes, the star of the show with Mugler Angel Elixir is definitely the florals. So this fragrance has those classy white florals that so many of us enjoy, but it's also a little bit sweet and also a little bit spicy but it's not too much of anything. It's also a bit creamy. So I really just love the way all the notes are blended in this fragrance. Now I know this fragrance is a bit new to my collection, but I have been wearing it pretty much every day since I picked it up. And let me tell you, nothing screams feeling feminine and classy like Angel Elixir in my opinion. So if you weren't a fan of the original Angel Elixir and you enjoy semi-sweet, semi-spicy, creamy white floral fragrances, I would definitely recommend getting your nose on the new Mugler Angel Elixir. Now for those that are still here and sticking around until the very end of the video, you are the real MVPs and I appreciate each and every one of you. And I actually have a bonus fragrance number 11. Number 11, Dua Vanilla Baby. Now I unfortunately was never able to get my hands on the original YSL Baby Cat fragrance. It just unfortunately was never released in the United States. So when I saw Dua was releasing their inspiration, I knew I had to pick it up. So while I wish I could compare this fragrance to the original, unfortunately I cannot, but what I can tell you is what this fragrance smells like to me. So this is a very dark, peppery, incense -y, 
semi-sweet, very sexy vanilla. Now, the one thing that really is confusing me about this fragrance, so many people mention that on the original, that the scent actually dries down to smell like vanilla ice cream. I don't get that at all with Vanilla Baby. So if any of you have the original, definitely let me know if it dries down to a more gourmand vanilla or not. Now, don't get me wrong. This fragrance is definitely centered around vanilla. And while I do find it is a bit sweet, it's definitely not oversweet. And I would certainly not classify this as a gourmand. Now, not only is this one of my first Dua fragrances, but this is also one of my first dupe fragrances in general. And I do have to say, the quality of the vanilla that is used in this fragrance, it really blew my mind. I don't find this vanilla a quarter note to be synthetic or cheap smelling whatsoever. It is incredibly smooth. Now I do find all of those fragrances combined really do wear throughout the entire wear of the fragrance. However, the one note that really sticks out to me, especially in the opening, is black pepper. So this fragrance is very pepper heavy. So this would definitely be the fragrance that I would reach for when I have on my leather jacket and my knee high lace boots. Now I'm not going to go too in depth with this fragrance right now because I do actually have a Dua video coming out pretty soon here. But let me just say, the quality of the vanilla that is in this fragrance, it is incredibly smooth, it is not synthetic, and it does not smell cheap whatsoever. So this is a fragrance that I'm definitely going to reach for when I want to feel like a bad ass. There is no other way to put it. This is that fragrance. Well, I really hope you all enjoyed this top 10 date night fragrance video. If you did, definitely hit the subscribe button because as I mentioned, I am going to be having a duo video coming out pretty soon. Let's just say one of the fragrances is a dupe of a recently released Tom Ford, a couple are of EBK, and again, one is the YSL Baby Cat dupe. All right, you guys. Well, I really hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for spending your time with me, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye, guys.